Last chapter that we're covering in this class is a chapter in trigonometry, trig. Now, trigonometry sounds a lot sounds a lot more scary than it is. Trigonometry is just triangles, looking at triangles, and their parts. Triangles have sides, three sides, and three angles, right? So that's what trigonometry is. You guys talked about that in math too. Math too, a big part of math too, is talking about triangles, talking about shapes, right? We're gonna focus only on triangles. And um, yeah, today we're not gonna focus on triangles, we're gonna focus more on their angles. We'll get to the triangles in a, in a little bit, but um, today just mainly angle stuff, okay? So there's six types of angles. Acute angle means less, bigger than 100, bi or sorry, bigger than zero, less than 90 degrees. A right angle is exactly 90 degrees. Um, obtuse is bigger than 90, but less than 180. A 180 angle is a straight angle. Half of a circle is 180, okay? Reflex angle is bigger than 180, bigger than 180. A full rotation is a full circle, 360 degrees. That's why there's 360 degrees in a circle, because it's a full rotation. Okay, so those are the types. So that those things probably sound familiar to you, because you guys have seen them before. Okay, the new part. I don't think you guys talked about, uh, I don't think in math too, you guys talked about negative angles. One of the new things is we have positives and negative angles. What decides if it's positive or negative? There you go. Direction. One word. Direction. Which way you go. You always start at zero. You always start at zero. And then if you go counterclockwise, it's positives. All positives. Positive 90, positive 180, positive 270, 360. And then you can go bigger than 360. You can keep going around and around and around forever and ever and ever. Negatives is you start the opposite. Start at the same spot, zero. And you go negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, negative 360, and then you go and go. That's just the direction. That's the only difference between positives and negatives. Okay? So if it's a negative, it means you're going clockwise. Positives, counterclockwise. Um, so there's two ways to measure angle openings. Degrees, which you guys are used to. Degrees, right? We're going to talk about today, and mainly we're going to focus on something called radians. Radians. We'll talk about radians today, but what is a radian? Radians and degrees are the same thing. It's like zero degrees Celsius is the same as 32 degrees Fahrenheit. In the United States, we use Fahrenheit, right? Right now outside, it's 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what it is right now outside. Every other country in the world doesn't know what Fahrenheit is. They know what Fahrenheit is, but they don't use it. They use Celsius, right? So zero degrees Celsius is the same as 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It's the same thing, just different system, right? In, the, in this country, you use inches, feet. Every other country uses millimeters, centimeters, meters, kilometers. Like when you get in a car, if you go to, if you've ever been in a car in a different country, it doesn't say miles per hour. It says kilometers per hour because that's the system they use. Okay. Um, so that's the difference. Degrees and radians are the same, but they're different systems. Okay. Okay, so here we go. I know it's not color coded on yours, but just some examples. On mine, it's blue and red. So the blue angles are positive angles. They start at zero. The first one goes to 135. The second one goes to 210. The third one goes to 300. Okay. Negatives. On yours, it's a little, the numbers are, it's supposed to be negative 115 here, negative 200, and negative 330. Okay, that's what it's supposed to be. So it's, it's just going in the opposite direction. Okay, going in the opposite direction. Here's the question. What is an angle? A lot of times it gets confusing. So let me show you. You don't have to draw this picture, but let me show you. Let me give you a picture here. You'll see this question sometimes on tests and quizzes. Here's one angle. 
There's another angle. Which angle is bigger? Because they're exactly the same. Exactly. A lot of people say, this guy right here, oh, this guy is bigger. No, the opening is exactly the same. How do you know? Because they're both got the blue tick mark. That means they're exactly the same. The angle is just the opening. Just because the door is bigger, it doesn't mean the angle is bigger. So if I have a regular size door, now if I increase that size, let's say it was a barn door and I opened it up, still the same opening, right? Just because the door is bigger doesn't mean that the angle is bigger. Okay, so the angle is just the opening. Okay, so both of those angles are the same. Yep. Okay, so positives and negatives. Direction, 100%. That's the reason why one's positive and one's negative is direction. Okay. All right. Yeah, make sure those are, because on yours, I don't think it's negative. The bottom three are negative 115, negative 200, and negative 330. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't think your guys' are right. That's why I changed mine. I don't think they were... If they say anything else, change them. Negative 115, negative 200 degrees, and negative 330 degrees. That's what they should say. If they say anything different, yeah, change them. It's a typo. Okay, so the next thing is something called a reference angle. A reference angle. A reference angle is always acute. Okay, so it's always acute. That means it's going to be between zero degrees. Oops, no. And 90 degrees. It's always going to be between. Reference angles are always going to be between 0 and 90. It'll never be 0, it'll never be 90, it'll never be negative, and it'll never go over 90. Okay, so reference angle depends on which quadrant you're in. Okay, there's four quadrants. Right? There's four quadrants. So if you're in quadrant one, the first quadrant, the reference angle is the same as the regular angle. So whatever the regular angle is, that's the reference angle, same size. That one's easy. If you're in quadrant two, the reference angle is how much to get to 180. Wherever you're at, how much to get to 180? How much farther do I have to go to get to, how much more of an opening do I need to get to 180? That's in quadrant two. Quadrant three is, okay, I passed 180. How much to get back to 180? I passed 180. How much to double back and go back to 180? That's quadrant three. Quadrant four is, I passed 180, I passed 90, I passed 180, I passed 270. How much to get all the way around? What am I missing here? What, how much more do I need to have an opening to get back to 360, or to get all the way to 360. So it just depends on where you're located. So that's the first thing with reference angles. You gotta know where you're at, okay? Okay, so let's look at example number one. Reference angle for a rotation of 220. First thing we gotta do is know where we're at. Where in the world are we? So I'm gonna draw a little picture. Okay, it's positive 220. So that means 90 plus another 90 is 180, plus another 90 is 270. That's too far. So that means I'm in this quadrant somewhere. I'm in this quadrant somewhere which would be quadrant three. I'm in quadrant three somewhere. That's where 220 is. Okay. 
So I go back up to my notes and say, okay, if I'm in quadrant three, how do I find the reference angle? Well, if I'm here, how much to get back to 180? That's what I'm trying to figure out. What I'm trying to figure out is, let me shade it, how much to get back to 180? I'm at 220 right now. Now, what's the easiest way to figure out how to get back to, 280, to, to 180? What's the easiest way to figure that out? I'm at 220. How much to get back to 180? What's the sub, subtracted by 180? That's probably the easiest way. 220 degrees minus 180 degrees equals 40 degrees. That's the reference angle. So in quadrant three, you're just going to subtract minus 180. Where are you at? Minus 180. Number two, now I'm at negative 156, negative 156. So let me draw a picture of where I'm at. So negative means I go the other way. Negative 90, keep going. Negative 180, went too far. That means I'm somewhere in quadrant three again. Same quadrant. I'm in the same quadrant. So the reference angle is going to be the same. How much to get here? How much more of an opening to get to that green? So you're at negative 156 degrees. Now you're not going to subtract though, because if I subtract 180, it's going to make a bigger negative. I don't want a bigger negative. I want a smaller negative. So I'm actually going to add 180 this time. So you're going to get 24 degrees. Reference angles can't be negative. They can only be positive. So it's just positive 24 degrees. That's how much to get there. Okay. All right, number three. Of the circle? Yeah. That's just where zero is. Okay. Yeah, zero is always going to be, um, let's see here, let me make a little dot. There, 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 there. Yeah, zero is just there. Yeah, that's where zero is. Why they chose that, I don't know. But yeah, that's, that's just always where you start. You always start at that little dot there. Yeah. Okay, so this one's positive 18. So positive 18. Go up. Nope. That's 90. Went too far. So positive 18 is going to be in quadrant number one. Well, quadrant number one says whatever your regular angle is, that's going to be the same as the reference. So since the regular reference angle was 18, the reference angle is also going to be 18. You don't have to add or subtract any of those guys. Okay. So the reference angle is always between zero and 90. Doesn't matter where you're at. All right. So the last thing we're going to do is now this idea of degrees and radians. Degrees and radians. Degrees are what you guys have been using. All the, you know, since up to now you guys have been using, I don't think they do radians in math too. You might have, but you probably not. So degrees are what we use here with the little degrees. Now we're going to convert to radians. It's the same thing. It's the same value. They're not any different. It's just comparing. It's just contract. It's just... It's just um, a different system, okay? So when we need, when we need radians, we're going to use the top formula. 
So when I need radians, the question asks, what are the radians? You're going to use the top formula. When the question asks about degrees, what degrees do you need? You're going to use the bottom formula. Okay. So let's go to the next example. Number four. Number four. Okay. It says, I need to convert each to radians. Radians. So I need to know what radians are. So I'm going to use this one right here. My question is radians. So I'm going to use the top one because I don't know what radians are. So I'm going to use the top one. They gave me degrees. Okay. So the formula is radians equals pi over 180 degrees. times degrees. Okay. Well, I don't know what radians are. That's why I'm using this formula. So I'm going to put radians equals pi over 180 degrees times degrees. Well, the degrees they gave me were 80. So I have two fractions. Here's one fraction. Or actually, I only have one. How do I multiply these two guys? What am I going to do to multiply these two guys? How do I multiply these two? Don't worry about the pi. Don't worry about the pi and the degrees. How would I multiply these two? If, 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 if this were, let me make it really easy or easier. If I had one half times three, how would I multiply those two? Put it as a fraction, right? Put the second one as a fraction and then multiply straight across. That's the same thing I'm going to do now. I'm going to change the one that isn't a fraction into a fraction. 80 degrees is not a fraction. I'm going to make that a fraction. Now I'm going to multiply straight across. So I get 80 degrees times pi over 80, 180 degrees, because anything times 1 is just itself. Multiplication done. It's a fraction. i got to reduce it. What do they have on top and bottom that I can get rid of? What are they both before the numbers? But besides the numbers, what, what do they have in common? The dots, the degrees, right? If they both have a degrees, I can divide them. No more degrees. Right? Now I can reduce, right? Now I can reduce. So the biggest thing that goes into 80 and 180. I think it is 10 for sure, so let's start with 10. So if I divide this guy by 10, I get 8. If I divide this guy by 10, I get 18. So I get 8 times pi over 18. And I could still reduce it by 2. Divide this by 2, divide this by 2, 4 pi, four times pi over nine. As far as I can reduce it, you are done. 80 degrees is the same thing as four pi divided by nine. They're the same exact measure. Just like zero degrees Celsius is the same as 32 degrees Fahrenheit. They're the same. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to do the same with the second one. Second one's a bigger opening, 125. Well, I still need radians. So I'm going to say radians equals pi over 180 degrees times 125 degrees. 
Okay, 125 degrees doesn't have a fraction. Give it a fraction. Multiply straight across. You get 125 degrees times pi. And then 180 degrees on bottom. Okay. The degrees cancel out because you got one on top and one on bottom. Now 125 and 180. I think the biggest number that goes into both is 5. Five goes into 125 five times, no, 25 times. And five goes into 180 36 times or 26 times. Let's see. Thirty-six times. Yep. Okay. So I have a hundred and twenty-five times pi over thirty-six. That's as far as you can go. So one hundred and twenty-five degrees in radians is a twenty-five pi over thirty-six. They're the same. Okay. So now we're going to do the opposite. So now they're going to give you radians. Now they're going to give you radians, and we have to do change it to degrees. So we're going to use the other formula, because degrees is the guy that I don't know. OK, so the other formula says degrees equals, and they're very similar. They're very similar. They have a pi and a 180. The only difference is they're in different spots. So I don't know where degrees. Pi over 180 degrees times radians. This one has 13 pi over 12. Wait, did I do that right? No, I use, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, it is, right. What the heck did I do? Did I write it wrong up here? Let's see. Yeah, I wrote it wrong on the board. I wrote it wrong up here. So radians has the pi on top, 180 degrees on the bottom. And then the degrees is the opposite. Okay, so now let me fix it. Okay. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can reduce fractions before you multiply them, or you can reduce fractions after you multiply them. It doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't matter. So if you're going to reduce them afterwards, you got to multiply straight across. So I'm going to multiply 180 times 13. Degrees. I still have a degrees and I still have a pi. The bottom is 12 times pi. Okay, now reduce. Well, they both have a pi, so I can get rid of the pi. And then I got to figure out what the biggest, so 12, let's see if 12 goes into 2,340. Divided by 12. Yep, 195. So when I divide, I still have a degrees, though. Degrees is still there. 195 degrees. So 195 degrees is the same thing as 13 pi over 12. They're the same thing. OK. 
Okay. 2 pi over 3. 2 pi divided by 3. Let's do that one. Again, I don't know what degrees are. So I'm going to say degrees equals 180 degrees over pi times 2 pi divided by 3. Two fractions, multiply straight across. So 180 times 2 is 360 degrees times pi. And then 3 times pi. Divide the pi's. And then 3 goes into 100, 360, 120 times. Okay. Okay, example number seven. Convert angle negative three radians to degrees. And then round your answer to the nearest tenth. What am I looking for here? Is the question mark degrees or is the question mark radians for number seven? Where's the question mark at? Am I looking for radians or am I looking for degrees? Degrees, yeah. So that means I'm going to use the second formula here. Okay. So degrees equals 180 degrees over pi times, and then what's the radians? Negative. Negative three, right? It doesn't have a pi. Sometimes it won't have a pi. It's okay. Well, change it to a fraction like we did earlier. Multiply straight across. So 180 degrees times negative three is negative 540 degrees divided by pi. Now, if it didn't say this, if it didn't say this part, if this part was missing here, round your answer, I would leave it like that. This answer is acceptable. But because it said round, we have to divide. OK, so you're going to go to your calculator and say negative 540 divided by pi. Pi button, it's right by the roots on the main screen, divided by pi. And it says round to the nearest tenth. Well, the first eight by the decimal is the tenth. So if I look behind it, that's another eight, so round up. So negative 171.9. Negative 171.9 degrees. Okay? We didn't do that for 5 and 6 because the pies cancel out, right? It didn't say round. 5 and 6 didn't say round. If it says round, then divide. Okay? All right, so I'm going to give you a few more problems on your own to try on your own, then we'll be done. Let me give you a few more. Three more. Do those in your notes, wherever you're going to tape. And then we'll be done. Okay, so number eight, seven pi over four is 315 degrees. Number nine, 190 degrees is 19 pi over 18 radians. And then negative 3.5 radians is approximately negative 200.5 degrees. 
Okay, so the, the question mark is what we were looking for. So eight, we were looking for degrees. Nine, we were looking for radians. 10, we were looking for degrees. Okay. All right, so tape it in your notes, tape's in the back. Tape that in.